to preach just a few moments this morning. Uh, the Lord laid this on my heart. And, and uh, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. But I want to say one thing before I get into the Word. Now, church, let me tell you something. I, I know a lot of people get upset at me, and, and I don't care, and a lot of other pastors. Because you know what, church? The, the gays, and all of them come out of the closet. Right. And for years and years, Christian people didn't vote because they, they were taught that, that, that we shouldn't get into politics. Now, I'm not getting into politics. Amen? I, I, uh, I'm for the people that the best for them are land and everything. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Amen. I still believe God has the answer. I said, I still believe God has the answer. Amen. And I tell you, we need to go God's way, not the Democrats or not the Republicans, but we need to go what God says. Amen. And it's time for God's people to stand up. I know a lot of pastors and have lost members. It's because they stood up and give them the word of God and give them that you have a right to do what you want to. I said, you have a right and a choice to do what you want to. Amen. But you've got to face God. I said, you've got to face God. Amen. And I tell you, when you, when you vote for people, Remember, Pat, a Republican that believes in abortion, believes in killing babies, and they know they're killing babies, and they believe in homosexuality and same-sex marriage and everything. When he goes against God's word, you are just as guilty as they are because you're putting up with it and you're voting for them. It's time for us to put them up. The people out of, out of the White House, out of Congress, out of government, and everything else. Amen. And, and it's, we're going to stand for God. Amen. Amen. I know people may get mad, and probably some have already left the church, and, and some have left other churches. But I'm going to stand up and preach the gospel, give you the knowledge, and give you the wisdom of what the Bible says, because that is my job as a pastor to be a you. Now, the Bible, now long, I know we had this thing that the church and the state. Let me tell you something. The church was, not, was already existed before the state ever existed. Can I say that again? Amen. The church already existed before the state because when Jesus built the church, amen, he told them to praise God, to go forth and preach the gospel, and that's what we were doing. We got so smart and everything, we started to divide the state and the church. But one day, God is going to do away with all that state and church business, and he's going to rule the world, praise God. What are you trying to say, Brother Maggard? I said, we need to go by the word of God today, church. And preachers need to stand up and pastors need to stand up and educate their people. Sin is sin, wrong is wrong. Can I hear an amen? And the Bible says in Psalm, now Psalm is said in this uh, chapter 1. I'm going to read it before I start preaching. Now I want the congregation to mark this, amen, because we'll be both pretty soon as we look into Psalms chapter 1 and 2. And we need to have... Recognize, amen. Now, you, like I said, we live in a free world, not a free world, but a, a free nation. Thank God. God gave us a nation that we're free, and we've got a right and choice to do what we want to, but one day we're going to stand. To, 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 and as we look into Psalms chapter 1, now, we have an obligation not to stand with the ungodly, not to sit and believe in their counsel. I'm not, I'm not going to go the way of the world. I'm going to way, go the way of God. And he gives us scripture that we need to go by. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What does that mean, walking with us? You're walking with the ungodly. You're agreeing. Amen. I preach once before. I said, are you in the confidence? In other words, if you walk along with them, you're agreeing what they say. Now, church, let me tell you, I don't care if he's a Republican or a Democrat. I'm not going to vote for that person that believes in killing babies. It's a proven fact. One time they didn't realize, uh, all, because we got all this knowledge now, we can see that baby had their hands moving, had stuck in their thumbs and everything else. And they're dealt, dearly going in and taking and crushing their brains and killing them right out there. And they know that there's a baby. That's not a fetus. That's a baby. That's a child. That's a person. That's a soul. And they're going to have to stand accountable for it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The same-sex marriage and everything. The Bible says God made man and woman. Right, right. Let's get some wisdom, church. Let's get some knowledge. Let's go God's way, not the way of the world. Amen. That's what it said. 
That's what we don't have to walk along with the world. This is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor saith in the seed of the scornful. That means, church, if you look at that word scornful, you'll see what I'm talking about. We don't need to sit with them kind of people, agree with them kind of people, go along with them kind of people, because we need to go God's way. People get mad if they want to leave or whatever they want to. I want to preach the gospel and I'm not politicking. Some already said, Brother Margaret, you're politicking. No, I'm not politicking. If I was politicking, I'd tell you who to vote for and everything. I'm telling you that you need to go God's way and listen to what God said. He gives us wisdom and knowledge. And I, 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 I'm preaching this this morning. Glory to God. I'm telling you, church, God's people need to wake up. Amen. And then, Brother God, what's going on in the world? But his delight is what it says. Now, said to the seed of the sword, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. This is what we got to walk in. This is what we're going to have to walk in, church. This is what we're going to have to go by. I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat or Spelling Poe or Tad Poe, whatever you are. You need to go by God's word because Amen. God will give us wisdom and knowledge. And I'm going to preach on this morning. This is the only book. Now, I tell you, church, we can have all these of George Myers and, and Joel Austin and all these other books, and Timmy Swagger and these other things. I'm here to tell you, this is the only book, amen. This is the only book I'm going to go by. This is the only book I'm going to walk by. This is the only book I'm going to walk by. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church, tonight? Because this morning, because see, the Bible said in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even into the dividing suffering of the soul and spirit, and of joints and marrows, and is a deserter of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It comes down to the heart, church, and I want you to know something this morning. I believe with all my heart that we as God's people, we need to get back preaching and teaching and showing our congregation what God's way is. The Bible tells us, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. He wants us, amen, to be the deserter of the good things and the word of God, church, and not go the way of the world. He, he saved us and brought us out and transformed transform us into a new world. And we need to think of the, the way the world, uh, not the way the world does, but God's kingdom does. Oh, I thank God for God's word this morning. This is the only book that builds up for your faith. I thank God for the faith that we got this morning, church. You're here this morning by the grace of God and by the faith that you believe in God. The Bible said that those that come to God must believe that He is and that He is a reward of them that deals and seeks Him. That the church, I want you to know something this morning. I thank God that we deal and seek Him. And, and maybe because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, 6, I believe what it said, that we must believe in God and He's a rewarder of God. Glory to God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's time for God's ministers and pastors to stand up and start preaching, amen, the word of God, and to give us a faith that we can walk by and stand by and to live by. Can I hear an amen? amen. Uh, we should claim on this word because this is a sword. Amen. He goes to the very to turn over thoughts and the tents of our hearts. And church, it's time for God's people, amen, to wake up and time for preaching to start up, amen, and preaching the gospel. Sin is sin. Oh, you know, this is what I'm saying, church. And, and, and don't be afraid of losing your ties or your membership. Oh, if I preach this and I preach that, then people get mad and leave. That's what's the matter with the church that they're dead. At last year, burned that church and they're dead because of so much sin and everything going on in churches because they believe in everything. They believe in abortion. They believe in same-sex marriage. And they believe in all this other stuff. And God said, when you got saved, you you done away with those things. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, glory to God. The Bible tells us in Psalms, chapter 8, verse 34 and 35, blessed the man that, blessed the man that heareth me and watches daily at, at my gates, waiting at my doors, for whosoever findeth me, findeth life, and he shall obtain favor of the Lord. I want to walk in favor, church, of the Lord. And church, be taken, let's look in the Psalms, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34, he tells us, amen, that we need to do that. I mean, I'm about to say the Psalms, Proverbs 8, 34 and 35. See, uh, I give you a lot of scripture because that's what we need. 
People preaching to get back to payment, preaching the gospel, giving them the word of God that they can write these words down and go home and study it to see if it's true or not. You get a person to read one scripture, preach 15 minutes on everything else. I'm not interested in what the world and everything else. I'm interested in what the word of God says. Oh, glory to God. I'll tell you, church, every born again Christian, every born again Christian, Everybody that loves God, you need to take this Bible. Amen. And you need to carry this Bible. And you need to study this Bible. That's what's the man with the preacher. They're, they're, they're just uh, believing everything what the preacher says and the pastor says. Well, I thought this and I thought this and I believe this. What does God say about it? You need to take this word of God and amen, study it. The Bible says, study thyself and show thyself approved. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to, amen, to, to show us and, and that we can run and divide the word as we read it. And, and church, it's about time we pick the Bible up, amen, and begin to read it and study it and know what we need to do. And don't listen to the preacher. Don't listen to the, amen, the, the world and everything else. What does God say? That's about what God says. If God says it's okay, it's okay. But if God doesn't say it's okay, it's not okay. Yeah. It's not what I believe, but what you believe is what God believes. And we need to study the Bible and to know that what we need to know. Can I hear that? Amen? Because it's wisdom, it's knowledge, it's truth. And that's what we need. Glory to God. People get mad at me. I'm going to vote for who I want to vote for. And, and I, I don't care what they want. It's bad as the other. No, not one not as bad as the other. Amen. There, there are sinners out there. There are, there, there, there are lost people. But yet some has morals, more morals than the other. We've got to vote for the least of God. And but church, when you vote, remember who you're voting for and why you vote for them. God cannot bless a nation that is sin. God cannot bless a nation that, that their leaders is ungodly and going against God. Oh, thank God for his word this morning. Amen. Hold on to this Bible. Hang on to this. Praise God. Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. It's your job. It's your job to read the word of God. Well, Brother Mike, I read it and I can't understand it. You can't pick up my Bible once every six months to try to get some understanding. You've got to study it. Look at the, 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 and the Bible gives you all kinds of reference that you can look it up. You just two people are just too lazy to pick their Bible. They want to do everything else but self study the God's Word and ask the Holy Spirit to lead them and guide them because the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. And church, it's the only book that will build your faith. Uh, you can read Joel Austin all you want to, and Jimmy Swagger's books all you want to, and all these other, George Byers and all these others. They're just out for money and everything anyway. And, and, and sit and read the word for yourself. Uh, give the Lord a hand, clap, church. That's why the church house we're in you today. Right. They're listening to what about, well, the witness told the way of the world. Amen. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. God understands. No, God don't understand. If it's not God's word, God don't understand. Right. Oh, glory to God. You know what I like about this book? See, we got a, the Bible says that in the last days, in fact, you look at the book of Romans. We got, we got the Jews up in the White House and in the Congress and the senators and even our government. They think that those are, those are, they're so smart that they're, 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 they're plump foolish. They're a bunch of fools, amen. And we go run along with them. Why? It's because they know we don't uh, uh, know the Word of God and they can make you believe anything. But I thank God this word here will make me smarter than all the governors and all the senators and, and all the uh, presidents and, and all the, uh, uh, the mayors and everything else. And, 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 and it will make us smarter than they are. Amen. The word of God will make you smart. It will let you know the snares and the traps of the devil. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119 verse 95. Psalm 119 95. The wicked, and that's who they are. We gotta remember the world is wicked. The, 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 the wicked leaders, the wicked. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. Right now, we've we got people, amen, in both parties 
try to destroy our nation, destroy the Christians, and they would love to do away with Christians. That's a spirit, can I say that again? That's a spirit of the Antichrist, and Christian people don't have sense enough to know it because they hate Jesus, they hate the church, and they know that's the only thing to hold the wickedness back. Amen. Because Christian people are now standing up for what the Bible says, not what they believe, but what God says. And church, the spirit of the Antichrist is at work right now. And we need to wise up because we have enemies as Christians and as a church. Amen. Amen. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. They love to destroy you. But I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen thee into all perfections. But thy commandments is exceedingly broad. Oh, I love thy law. See, if you love this word, amen. I said, if you love this word, and I hate to say it, I guarantee 90% of Christian people has been saved for I don't know how many years, and they've never read this Bible through. And they said, oh, I'm so God, and I got so much wisdom, and I got so much knowledge. You can't have wisdom, and you can't have knowledge. You can't have understanding unless you know the Word of God, because this is your wisdom, this is your knowledge, this is your discernment, and church, this will cause you to be above all your enemies, and they don't take time to read it, and listen to ever Tom, Dick, and Harry, and all these ungodly preachers and pastors, and those book writers and everything else, instead of getting down and studying the Word of God, and getting to church. That's not afraid to preach the truth. If they get mad, they be mad and they can leave. Hey. Brother Myron, you preach your, your politic or two bucks. I don't politic. I just say what God says. Amen. And you can take it for what it's worth. Amen. I'm not going to do church because you're a Democrat or a Republican. Right. But if you do believe, if you believe in abortion, you don't, you don't you should be no Sunday school teacher. That's right. Correct. You believe in killing babies and you are homosexual, you don't need to be a teacher or a preacher. Amen. Because you, that's, that's, not, that's not even the gospel. Right. Right. Ooh, glory to God. Preach it. Verse 97 says, Oh, how how love I the law. It is my meditation all the day. All day long we should be learning to say the word of God. Meditate upon the good things of God, the laws of God. It is my meditation all the day long, though through thy commandments, can I say that again? Through my commandments, well, this is what it says, can I say it again? Through my commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Church, this world is our enemy. Jesus said it was our enemy. He said, love, love not the world, because if we love the world, Jesus is not in us. Whoops. God gave you that history. Amen. I saw that to Brother Brock come out and fix the furnace and everything. And boy, his eyes just lit up. He loves the Lord. I said, that's why I'm going to preach on Sunday morning. Amen. This is the only book to give you faith. I said, this is the only book that will give you faith. It's the only book that will give you wisdom. Amen. And it, it, it causes you to be a prosperous over your enemy. It makes you wiser than your enemy. That's why Jesus is being the devil because he was wiser than the devil because he knows the tricks and the trend of the devil. See, the, they don't realize there's prince of powers and power and there's a devil out there trying to kill you and destroy you and a lot of people don't have enough sense to know it. Are you listening to what I'm saying, church? And this book right here will give you power. I'm trying to cut this short a little bit, but this book is the only book that will give you power Amen. over the devil. Amen. You can quote George Mars all you want to, Jimmy Swagger all you want to, yeah, and, and uh, uh, who else? Uh, Joe Austin and all these other yahoos. What's that other book writer that uh, can't remember his name now? Oh, there, there, there's, a little, there's a little take in there. There's a little pudding in there. Make you feel good. So this is what it says. Jesus said that it's written. It's written. Amen. This book, if you arm yourself, the Bible says he wants us to be stronger in the power of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11 tells us, Father, my brother, be stronger in the Lord in the power of his mind. Are you listening? Why does it put on the whole armor of God? 
Church, we've got to take it from Genesis to Revelation, and we can just take, take and choose and pick what we want. We've got to take the word for what it says, and if we don't like it, just chew on it anyway, digest it, and go on. If it's still from your toe, go on. Uh, if it trims you up a little bit, keep going on, because God is going to make you wiser than your enemy, and He's going to give you power to overcome the devil. The Bible says in Ephesians 10, Father, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole work of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Can I say that again? He will give you power to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's come to kill, to steal, and destroy. He's going to and throw up and down. Amen. To, to destroy you. But through the word of God, through the faith that the word gives us, we can overcome him, we can rebuke him, and we can come out strong. Can I hear that? Amen. Amen. Oh, give a load of hand clap. I'm happy this morning. I mean, I just preach what God says to me this morning. The people out there are faithful, man, they need to hear it. Amen. 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 This is the only book that will give you faith. Only put three to make you smarter than your enemies. And only book will cause you to overcome the devil. Nothing else will. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, but against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of darkness in this world, of spiritual witnesses in high places. And it said, Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Church, if you can't figure out right now that you're standing in evil days, you, you haven't been watching television or something. Because every time you turn the news on the television, they're killing each other and everything. And they're destroying, they're trying to destroy every law that we got. They're trying to destroy everything that, that, that we used to stand for. And, and yet people go to law with it. I'm here to tell you, church, the Bible says we've got to love one another. There's some things that we must, everybody is, 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 was a sinner. I've done things in my life, amen, that I'm not pleased. But you don't think God's going to get rid of me because I've done something way back in the years or whatever. With these the statue things are tearing down. They have no reason, no why, that they should tear it down because everyone that's tearing down. Jesus said, Those without sin cast the first stone. And then, but the people up front that hate people, hate God, hate Jesus Christ, hate the church, and they're destroyed, trying to destroy everything else, trying to make themselves look good. They're just as big a sinner as anybody else. Amen. Amen. Woo, glory to God. This is the only book. That will ever make you successful. Amen. Now, I'll, I'll be what God says. Amen. I have been successful in my life. Now, I may not be driving no Cadillac. I may not live no three hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Amen. Finally, after about thirty seven years, I got my first brand new truck. And all people got jealous of that probably, or that or whatever. After I saved the whole my life, Amen. Are you just what I'm saying? But we're successful because we know we go God's way. I pay my tithes. I, I, Lord, I give to the Indian mission, the world mission. I give to the poor. What are you trying to say, Brother Maggard? I, I'm a giver. If you're a giver, God will bless you. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. I'm closing. I know it's getting kind of late. This book, this is the only book. Will be your faith. This is the only book that will cause you to prosper. That's what it says. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all according. I say it again, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And all some things it's hard to digest. I know some things are hard. Now, come on, church. You, I don't see no hellos or no angle wings on you. Some of these things are hard to digest. But if you're digesting it, it becomes sweet to you. Amen. Ooh, glory. I'm going to say something wrong. It's just like a spout. Not your daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they watch over you. It says, Thou shalt meditate day and night, but that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, you need to underline that, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then, then thou shalt have good success. If you want to have, you want to prosper and have good success, you stay in God's word, walk by God's word, do what God's word says. And I guarantee you, you'll be successful and you'll be prosperous. This is God's, this is God's truth. Amen. Amen. 
And this book right here is the only book that's going to take you to heaven. But you know what? This book is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And if you walk by this word, the children of Israel will have to walk in the land of the milk and honey. God bless you. Through his word, through his cloud and everything. This is the only book that will cause you to walk right into heaven. Amen. It's a light to our feet and a pathway. We'll walk in the light of God's word. We'll walk, we'll walk right into heaven. Well, I hope you rephrase that. We're going to fly into heaven. But this word is going to lead us up to it. Would you stand this morning? So it's like this brief one, God live in my heart because I tell you, we're living some bad times right now. And we got some ungodly, worldly people leading us. And I don't blame nobody. I blame, the, I blame Christian people, the people that should know the Word of God. And when they're bad, when they're good, we should learn who, who, who to vote for and not to vote for. I'm not telling you who to vote for. But I tell you what, anybody will tell me if I can't sit up and preach the gospel and preach the truth. My job as a pastor is to give you wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. No way I can do that is preaching the Word of God and tell you how it is. Amen.